Hi everybody, uh, Dr. L here with the second part of this two-part segment on micro theory uh, related to recovering the production technology from the cost function specification. And I just wanted to back up a few steps here and um, go just nice and slowly through the algebra of how to recover the cost function. So uh, right on the slide, what we've already done is we've applied Shepard's lemma uh, to find the input demand bundles. And we've gone ahead and isolated the price ratio uh, in each input demand bundle. Uh, because we remember that the price ratio um, in equilibrium is equal to the rate of tactical substitution. Okay, that means both of these expressions on the right here, in the blue and the green, are both expressions for the rates of technical substitution, just one in terms of capital, one in terms of labor. Right, um, and what we'd like to do is recover the production function uh, using this information here. So we're going to set the blue and the green terms equal to one another. And this will actually allow us to find an expression for Q in terms of L and K. Okay. So again, these are both expressions for the RTS. They have to be equal in equilibrium because the RTS is are equal to because the RTS is equal to the price ratio of the inputs. Uh, and this is how so we're going to use this equation here uh, to solve for Q in terms of L and K. And I'm going to just go through the algebra sort of step by step. Uh, so first step, we have the blue term equal to the green term. Okay, the next step I'm going to arrive at uh, by taking these quantities in the denominator, and I'm going to pull them out, which means I'm going to make the power negative. I'm going to bring it up to the numerator, and then I'm going to go ahead and distribute each of these powers onto that QB term. And I wind up getting each of these terms here on the right. And then in the next step, uh, what I'll wind up doing is I'll actually uh, raise both sides to the power a times a minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to raise both sides to a times a minus 1 power. Uh, so that's going to have an effect of uh, multiplying into all these exponents here. And that will result in this series of exponents below. Again, I'm multiplying through by a times the quantity a minus 1 in the exponents, which is equivalent to raising both sides to the a times the a minus 1 power. Okay, and the next step, uh, I'm just going to simplify this exponent here. So I distribute that negative b in. Nothing tricky. Okay, and the next step, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to separate this term into these two quantities. In step 6, I'm going to eliminate both of these q to the minus ab terms since they're on both sides. I'm just going to divide through and eliminate those. That's how I arrived at step six. Uh, then we move to step seven. And in step seven, all I've carefully done is I've moved this term right here. I've moved this to the other side. And then I flipped it upside down so that this power winds up becoming positive. Okay, and that's how I wind up getting to step seven here. Okay, to move from step 7 to step 8, all I'm doing is I'm raising both sides to the 1 over b power. Okay, notice that's going to affect all of these exponents. I'm now dividing them by b when I raise both sides to the 1 over b power. And I've effectively now in step 8 isolated q. So if you start looking at the right-hand side, you should see something that looks similar to a production function starting to pop out. Okay, we can go to step 9 here. Uh, and to get to step 9, um, all I'm doing <clears throat> is I'm uh, going to flip everything in here upside down and then make the corresponding powers negative. So notice when I, when I flip these terms here, I now have changed the powers so that they're negative of what they were before. And then in step 10, I'm going to go ahead and uh, factor out these z terms. So when I factor out that z, I'm going to distribute the powers, uh, and then I'm going to add the powers together, and that gives me the z to the negative 1 over b term. We're almost there. This is really starting to look like a familiar production function. And then in the next step here, 11, okay, uh, what I've done is I've grouped all of these terms here, which notice they're all constant, z, a, and b. These are all constant parameters. So I've grouped them together, and that's exactly uh, what this term in brackets is going to be here once I factor out this 1 over b from all of these exponents. So I pull out the 1 over b exponent. There it is. Okay, 
and then last but not least, I'm going to argue that we actually wound up getting this form of the Cobb-Douglas production function. Notice here that this first term is entirely a constant. So that's this constant a. Right? This guy is all constant. Z, a, and b is all show up there. So that's a constant. That's this guy. Okay, the power on L, A over B, that's just a regular alpha exponent on labor. And this exponent 1 minus A over B, that's just our 1 minus alpha exponent on capital. Okay, so again, what we did here is we essentially uh, applied this cost minimization exercise in reverse. We started with the cost function in the first video segment. Uh, we wound up applying Shepard's lemma and essentially using the tangency condition where the RTS was equal to the wage ratio, uh, the price ratio of the inputs uh, to recover the production function um, using Shepard's lemma. Uh, so again, step 12 here, that is our Cobb-Douglas production function. Uh, so we were able to go from the cost function itself backwards to recover the production technology. Uh, that's it. Hope you enjoy and good luck studying.